Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome to each and every one of you that are tuning in to our daily Bible study. My name is Dr. PJ and I just want to thank you and appreciate you for participating each day in our daily Bible study. And today we're going to be teaching about the generational curses and familiar spirits that are lingering around our family tree. I want to pray and ask God to bless you and bless Pastor Dallas Jr. for allowing me to use this platform. I want to appreciate you in everything and every way. I ask the Lord to bless you continually, to continue to increase you body, spirit, and soul. Amen. And today we're going to be teaching also about the Jenkins family curses. The Jenkins are a notorious family in America and I'm going to be exposing all of these familiar spirits and generational curses that are being roaming around this family. Again, we must understand that the fallen angels came down and the fallen angels look like us in the Hebrew is say ish. I-S is ish. They look like every race. They come in the Asiatic race, um, the Latino race, every race, the black race, different tribes. And how they came down here and they impregnated the women. And the women was also given into marriage to them because the, the, the fathers of these women accepted the bride price, which made them rich. And therefore, since women partook of these marriages and they offer up themselves to have children with these fallen angels the fallen angels took this opportunity to rebel against God all that what we are watching and seeing today is the rebellion of the fallen angels the rebellion of the offspring of the fallen angel which is mankind that is rebelling to this day against God number one God placed a mark upon the first murderer. The first murderer was who? Cain. Cain murdered his brother, killed him, and buried him somewhere. And in the book of Enoch, the cries of Eve, Eve tears and cries. She cried and she screamed so much and bawled that God allowed Abel to come down and to comfort her. And then he went back with the Lord. Amen. So these things are written and these are factual things that happen in historical findings. And you know, a lot of the books are showing up now because we are in the end time. And we want to come back to the family that we just did the expose for you to see how the generational curses are bound in certain bloodlines and few of them are able to escape. Only few of them are able to escape these curses. Only few, if they come from that particular bloodline, you have the identifiers, murder, rape, you know, violence, and bullying. You have all of these different ramifications that shows you what kind of um, generational curses. That way you can be aware when you go and marry into these families, usually they are very tall people in the family eight nine feet in the air they very and they suffer with all these different ailments the first thing is the bully spirit they have this uncontrollable anger alcoholism they have them the wife beaters they 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 cannot satisfy themselves they go from woman to woman to woman to woman because when the fallen Jesus came down they was having sex and they took the woman they raped the woman and then when they couldn't find women they used children they used boys and girls and then when they couldn't satisfy themselves because there was no woman left they took like three four five ten wives and they was able to impregnate them at the same time and produce a tribe tribes that are very much alive today and those tribes they build cities and from those cities they build nations nations that are corrupt to these days <coughs> nations that fight the Israelites and fight the Hebrew people and the Christian people to this day. Even
even in the Medo Persian, there's history where say the Medo Persian people started all this stuff with the Aryan nations and the superior race and all of this stuff, you know, the, the supremacy. So we, we can dive into history and you will find all these different things that is still affecting us to this day. There's nothing new under the sun. And I'm going to be explaining about these fallen angels and these demons as I narrate from my book of deliverance that I use. And it will be a revision is coming soon to be on the market again. The familiar spirits. I, I explain here that um, I'm going to be reading this one, one verse from this particular chapter. And we have to remember that the fallen angels taught them witchcraft. Taught them how to commit abortion. The, 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 the fallen angels taught them how to build armies to fight the people of God. The fallen angels, children, they are called in the Bible the tears. While men slept, the tears came. And I just want to read from um, this um, Exodus 20. Um, and I'm going to read, read from verse 5. And verse 5 of Exodus 20 is follow. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. Mm -hmm. And that got to do with the sin of idolatry, which is in verse 4. Matter of fact, let's go and read it from verse 3. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. No other gods before me. Those, for thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Or have any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I... The Lord God, thy God, I'm a jealous God. God is a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers. The fathers is talking about the males. The fathers from male to male to male. As you read the Bible, you will see they begot, begot, begot. The women are not mentioned. The fathers, the male chromosome, the spermatozoi, the sperm. Upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Amen. And we're gonna pause there. And I want to again tell you that generational curses are real from the first family that committed the sin, which was Cain offspring. Cain family, if you've studied the, the genealogy of Cain, there was a whole heap of murderers, multiple murderers, and God said he put that mark upon Cain so we can able to recognize the tears. We can, you can be able to recognize the, the, the children, the Nephilians, the, the, the Nephilim, the Gibars, those lizards, you must able to recognize the children of the fallen angels and the children of the giants. They have a character. The character is criminal and violence. And there is criminology and violence in every race. This proves what God say. Like those fallen angels went to every race. They spread themselves. The first set, the flood carried them, carried them away. But in the book of Enoch, the second set of those fallen angels came down a second time. And there's most multiple of them and spread themselves throughout the world, throughout all the people. From every race, every color, every ethnic, every background. You're going to find murderers, rapists, all kind of wickedness that is done to children in pedophilia, human trafficking, sex slave. All of these peeping Tom and stuff, those people, them all, the tears, they are here to reap havoc. They are here to make, to, 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 to fight God and fight God people. They do these things because they hate God. 
They do sexual promiscuity because they don't believe in God. They spread HIV, they spread syphilis, all chlamydia, they spread and, 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 and all kind of sexual disease. Gonococulus, they don't care. They don't wear a condom to protect themselves. They do the toogie woogie. They even sleep with animals that practice bestiality. They establish polygamy. Even in this nation, they got areas and state that polygamy is okay. They practice incest. They have places and state where cousins and first cousins are still getting married. And they produce a lot of sick and mental illness. The mental illness came from the fallen angels. All the generic markings in the medical and scientific field come from the fallen angel. Why there are human beings with orange blood? Google it. Google the Basque people, the Baltic Sea and the Basque people. Why their gene is different from the other people's gene? Go back and study. Go back and research for yourself and you're going to prove like the word of God is truth. You're going to prove like Dr. PJ was telling you the truth. Just, just prove me wrong. Go research for yourself. And we're going to study because we have issues still in our, amongst our people. Because the fallen angels came down amongst our people too. And the fallen angels inbred into our people. But what happened during slavery, a lot of people was forced to mix into other black races, other black tribes. Back in the days, they were not doing that because we stayed away from them. Just like what happened to the, in the land of the Median, the Medo-Persians. Those people was practicing Zor Zoroastrianism, astrology, all kind of wickedness, worshiping the Venus, worshiping Easter, worshiping Asherah. They call her different names. They was doing all kind of wickedness. But the children of God also lived in that land. The land was Midian. The Midian people was living around the Midianites. The Midianites and the people of Midian are two different people because the Midian people were dark complected people. You see, that's why Midian hated Sephora. Amen. Because Sephora came from, from Keturah and Abram, which is a darker tribe, a people, what they call the lost tribe, but nobody is lost because God knows who we are. And then you have Sarah, Sarai, Sarah. And Abraham. Only those two groups follow what God say. The other group went to the east. They did not follow God. They didn't do the sacrifice. They didn't follow what um, God Almighty. Uh, when the father said to do. They didn't follow none and nothing that, that Abraham taught them. They didn't follow. They choose their own religion. Their mother religion. Which is the Hagarites. They choose that religion. They didn't follow the religion of Abraham. And that's where you can open up your mind. To this day does never follow the religion of Abraham and they are the offspring of Abraham too but let's start as I dive in into the familiar spirits it say the familiar spirits are fallen angels demons the messengers of Satan strong men ish men looking just like every ethnic group and color they travel in legions. The devils and evil spirits and evil angels. They are bill collectors. And also they were called in ancient times the sons of God. Amen. And we could find that in the book of Job. In the, where they call them the sons of God used to gather together. We continue. These fallen angels are falling from grace there's no salvation for satan and his fallen angels those angels belongs to the armies of satan and you can read them in ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 and we read and we're going to move quickly and it says here Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand 
against the wires of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, number one. This is all Satan is organized with his fallen angel. But against one, principalities, that's one. Powers, that's two. Against the rule of a darkness of this world, three. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. So Satan is organized in four branches. Satan is organized in principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So you're fighting. We all are fighting four powers, but over the kingdom of God has greater armies than his and greater power. And it says your evil spirits can take on the physical appearance of anyone even those who are deceased those who are dead they can assume their voices they can appear in your dreams they can sound just like them act like them and even some people some children of the fallen nature they practice uh order called the necromancer or medium where they use their vocal cords and allow demons to speak through the vocal cords, just like the witch of Endor. Now, the incubus demon is a demon that molests women. They have sex with the women while they're sleeping. They also can impregnate women during the intercourse. For men, the devil is called succubi or succubus. They 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 love to turn the men into homosexuals and bisexuals they molest young boys and girls also and we're going to give you the definition of incubi incubi is a demonic sexual attack on females by raping them in their sleep they actually molest them and they marry them too they take them for wives if you have a dream and you come to me for counseling and you told me well i dreamt i was pregnant and i was giving birth immediately i know that you have a spirit husband you are married to in the spiritual kingdom in the king in the spirit world in the kingdom of darkness you have a husband and you are married to a fallen angel and he has impregnated you in that kingdom it says they turn them into prostitutes, into strippers, but, and cause them to commit sexual sins. They call them nymphomaniac. Nymphomaniac is a woman that cannot be satisfied. She just constantly have to be doing the toogie woogie with anybody. She goes from man to man. She sleep with men, she prostitute, she strip, she do all the all the the, the the immorality. And back in the days, my grandmother used to call them white liver. That's what they used to call them, white liver. But the same thing is for men. The men that go around when they when a, when a, when a woman is a virgin and a man sleep with her and take her virginity is a blood covenant. When a man is a virgin and he sleeps with a woman, he also has a covenant, a spiritual covenant. So is the, is, is the man sleep with a prostitute? The, he has never had to give boogie before, but the first sexual intercourse is with a prostitute, or a, prostitute a woman in the street, a street walker, or we call it street walker. Then that man life is going to be upside down when he get older since the first one who he slept with he have a soul tie and a blood writ covenant with that woman because she was the one that broke his virginity because men are virgin also so when he sleep with a prostitute he sleep with a married woman he sleep with somebody in his family a cousin or aunt take his virginity it affects the man spiritually as they grow in this world they become promiscuous because you adopt the spirit of the man or the woman who took your virginity so you become one flesh 
one soul and you start acting like that person. So the men then become fornicators. The woman become whore. The fornicator in the Hebrew is for the male. It is it's a male prostitute. It is a whoremonger. It is an adulteress. It is a rapist. It is a molester. So the males go through the same thing too. You know. And this type of demon. Can summon us. To attack you. Through witchcraft. They can actually cast a spell on you. And turn you up. So you can be running around sleeping with other people too. Curses of lust. Can be placed on a man or a woman. They put charms in their food, in their drink. They take their clothing. They take something that belongs to here and they turn them out. Where they're running around all around the street, sleeping with different people. Also, if you come from a home, hmm, let's get into the generational curses now. If you come from a home, because the curses are very strong when it passed down from male to male. According to the word of God, it's the male who is responsible. It is the male who is responsible for food, shelter, clothing, providing. But it is responsibility of the males for the spiritually upbringing of the family. It is the responsibility of the male to make sure that the wife is covered spiritually. But since we're living in the last days... And there's so much mixture because of the fallen angels. There's so much mixture in the genealogy because of slavery. Slavery did that to us. A lot of us, our, our families were tainted. Our tribes were tainted. And because of the inner mixture, they tried to bunch all of us together. Like all of us came out of Africa. But that is not truth. A lot of the black people you see... We are Tianos, Boricuas, Choco. We come from other different tribes in the Americas. And right here, we are Minqua, Blackfoot Indian, Cheyenne. We are um, all these different tribes that, that we, um, Iroquois tribe, because I have an ancestor who was Iroquois. All of these different black Seminole tribes, and they want to bunch us up like every black person in america or in the americas came from africa that is not true all black skinned people are not originally from africa and how do you know just go back and see their culture now if your great grandmother didn't practice african voodoo or your grandmother or your, or your genealogy did not have African voodoo. They don't believe in that. They don't burn candles. They don't wrap their head. They don't do all. They don't, they don't have no type of belief in that. You are excluded from that. Because it's not your family tradition. You're not linked to that. If your father people. And his family was linked to that. It's different. Sometimes you have both. Neither one of them linked to that. Like in our background, neither one of our side, the women, like my great grandmother on both sides, they none of them was linked to Africa. They were they were brown skinned people, but they did not come from Africa. They don't practice the African tradition. They don't believe in voodoo. They don't believe in none of that. All they say, like they was their ancestors. Then the people came, the foreigners came, they took them into slavery, they enslaved them, they beat them and they raped them and they sold them into slavery and they was raped and produced children to the African men. They were sold and they were forced to have sex, to have the toogie woogie with the African men. But they were not from Africa. Amen? Let us clarify that. All of us are black, but we all did not come from Africa. We are, my family is black Seminoles. Amen. So we're going to continue in Sokobai. Now the Sokobai dem demonic to the sexual attacks on males. It is the fallen angel that is a fornicator is a male. So they convert them into fornicators which is mean a male prostitute. And 
Remember when they couldn't find women, they took girls, boys, children, babies, and they even took men and had sex with them. This is what the fallen angels did. But this type of attack also happened in the dreams. So uh, uh, there was counseling one time that they brought, you know, happy before, brought a little young man. And the young man was explaining that when he go to the bed at night, something poking him in the in the in the rectum so they tried to investigate to see um who was doing it in the family they took the child to the doctor the child was not being molested but something was taking this child into a spiritual realm and was trying to convert him into homosexuality there's one right now who is 15 years old and he is totally on the other side he choose to be in the tugu woogie same sex because of all that dreams the mother couldn't control it so there's nothing that nothing else she can do that spirit don't transform him now he actually looked like a female and that's what was happening to him being attacked in his dreams okay let's go to leviticus 19 regard not them that have familiar spirits and a seek after do not need a seek after wizard to be defied by them because I'm the Lord thy God. Amen. Say so don't follow them. When you go to these seers and you go to these people, the first thing they ask you is for your date of birth. Once you give them your date of birth, they ask you for your children's date of birth. Because now they're gonna tamper with your children. You see, they're gonna mess with your children now. So when you give them your children date of birth, you're giving them access. You're giving these wizards and these witches access to your children. You're giving these, these satanic men and women access. You see, it says your God will not tolerate any occult activity in the life of a Christian. All of them that are teachings, these are teachings of Satan. Teachings that came from these fallen angels. Now in Leviticus 20, it say, and the soul that turn after such that have a familiar spirit and after wizards to go whoring after them, you know, following them, I will even set my face against that soul and I will cut him and her off from among my people. You will cut him off from among his people. The truth is that the occultic practice are in high I'm at high demand now you know and it is a fulfillment of the end time prophecies of great of the great falling away that Jesus taught us you see Jesus taught us that this was going to happen that will become reprobate he will turn him into a reprobate man now where I stay at I used to stay at in Stone Mountain Georgia from Stone Mountain Georgia to Lytonia, Georgia, to the city of Stonecrest, to the city to Conyers is one of the biggest Caribbean cults in the area. One of the largest Caribbean cults that include all the major islands of the Caribbean. And the women or the men are part of the cult. So they move down here and they have their meeting ground. You see? But I war and pour in the spirit of God with the army of the Lord on my side and the Holy Spirit of God, the blood of Jesus, I, they fight me all the time. But one of the biggest Caribbean cult has moved to Georgia. They came out of New York. Some of them came from California. Some of them came from, from Florida. But they're coming from the Northeast. And there's a whole bunch of them. So what they're doing they, 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 they're bringing in all these young women. Some of the young women that you see, they, their grandparents was part of that cult. Their great grandparents was part of that cult. So that's a family tradition. You see what I'm telling you? There's a family tradition in the lodge, lodges. There's a family tradition in the Eastern Star. It's passed down from one generation to another. It's a family tradition in the Freemasons. It's a family tradition to be in voodoo, hoodoo, whatever religion it is. Hinduism, New Age, there's a family tradition somewhere. 
There's a family tradition that is being passed on for generation and generation. And that's why we have all these curses from generation to generation. We see curses and curses and curses. Amen. Amen. And this is because of occultic practices. And when you see families like the Jenkins families where all of them are murderers, rapists, they kill. You have to go back and, and see that these families were tied in into some fallen angels. Some type of fallen angel took over these families. And I want you to listen carefully. Amen. You could say Nico Jenkins and his relatives have had a colorful past. Just look at their family tree. Seven felons in just two generations. Let's start with Nico's uncle, 51-year-old Warren Levering. He's a felon just released from prison in Oklahoma and has done time in Nebraska too. Investigators say he's fathered seven children with six different women in five states. This week, prosecutors charged him as an accessory in the murder of Andrea Kruger. They say he helped Nico get rid of Kruger's car and tried to set it on fire near 43rd and Charles. Prosecutors say Levering got the gas can from his sister's house, Nico Jenkins' mother, Lori. Lori just bonded out of jail herself this week on an unrelated felony terroristic threats charge. In addition to Levering, Lori has two other brothers. Both are convicted felons. One is even currently on parole. Investigators say Lori Jenkins had six children with David McGee, but never married him. McGee died in 2009, but was a felon himself, convicted of terroristic threats. Of the couple's six kids, four have been arrested in the past month. 23-year-old Erica Jenkins is a convicted felon, now facing murder and weapons charges in the death of Curtis Bradford. Friday, she told Judge Coniglia she can't be a killer because she's three months pregnant. Investigators say she has a seven-year-old son, too, that initially was placed in child protective custody. Erica's little sister, 18-year-old Lori Sales, known as Lolo, is charged in Bradford's murder, too. Prosecutors say she got rid of the murder weapon. A third sister, Melanie, also a convicted felon, bailed out of jail last week on unrelated terroristic threats charges. She's 25, and investigators say she has three children under the age of seven, and all were initially placed in child protective custody. As for Nico Jenkins, he was just released from prison before prosecutors say he shot and killed four people. He's 27 years old and legally married to 22-year-old Shalonda Jenkins, seen here in a recent interview, and told us she's pregnant with Nico's child. Nico has two other sisters, both live out of state, and neither are in much contact with the Omaha Jenkins. A broad look at the ties to one man, a man prosecutors say has uprooted four other families. And here we see the modern day generational curses. You may not believe that generational curses do exist, but they exist. And when you see people picking up guns, like in Chartown, Chicago, I have family that had to flee to other parts of, of Illinois because they was afraid for their lives. They even left furniture and everything behind and just took their clothes and ran for their lives because they were so afraid. When all of this stuff started, they ran for their lives. They went to Skokie, Evanston, Jolette. They just run, ran for their life and never looked back. So there's no hiding place down here. The fact is, these type of family have a strong genealogy, a strong generational curse means that they are connected to a fallen angels. How comes everybody in two generations, just murderers, murderers, murderers. So you can see it for yourself every day as you go to the news, you going to be seeing people who have familiar spirit. People who have familiar spirit may be next to you. People who have familiar spirit may be a neighbor, somebody very close in your family. You might see a group of them. Like I have a group of family 
Like they just live for the day. They don't care nothing about nothing. You know, how can you have a house full of children and not and, and you have them and they're growing and they don't you don't teach them how to pray, you don't tell them nothing about God, they disrespect you, they want to beat you up. You know, they I got family like that. They don't care, but when things happen, they call me. So I just got tired of throwing my pearls to the swine. I blocked their number. Is that so you want to live? Live that way. Because you go and you intermix yourself and produce children with these type of males that are fallen angel offspring. And I'm just teaching and I'm just saying these things because God gave me a mandate and this is for educational purpose. You got to educate yourself in the word of God. This is not to judge and condemn people, but to bring people, make them aware and bring them and open up their spiritual eyes that we live in in the last days. And Jesus told us it's going to be violence in these last days. It's going to be witchcraft and sexual promiscuity like Tuggy Woogie. It's getting hot, sister, and it's going to get hot, brothers and sisters, and it's going to continue to get hot. Amen? And to close out, we're going to read again. From Leviticus 20, a man also, a woman that have a familiar spirit, is a wizard, or is a wizard, a witch, shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned them with stones, and their blood shall be upon them. Now, when a woman or a man is a wizard, a witch, there's no such thing as self-deliverance. I seen a lot of them on YouTube saying I was a witch and I know you are not being delivered because you rejecting God. So they're playing you. They're playing you because you don't have a strong anointing. They're telling you that oh I was a witch now I'm a pastor. No. You're not my pastor. You're not called by God. You need to repent. You need to go through a strong deliverance. And you see sometimes women show a bad example to their daughters or to their sons. But still, it go back to the male. If the male is in prison, you're going to pick up a jailbird and try to regenerate him. You can't change a jailbird. He's an ex-convict and a criminal. You can't change that. You can't change them. There's no way you can change them. The only one who can change a man or a woman is God. They have to repent because there's God, there's nothing by force, it's free will. They got to repent of the evil, wicked ways. And they got to call out to God and ask God to help them. And we're going to conclude this part one of the generational curses. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you. Thank you for participating. Father God, bless each and every one as we study this, this generational curses and I keep exposing all these wickedness that are happening today in our community in Jesus mighty name I pray amen I defeat you Satan in the name of Jesus I defeat you Satan in the name of Jesus I defeat you Satan in the name of Jesus Christ amen